This is Catalog and Cocktails. Don't forget to subscribe, rate, and review wherever you listen to your podcast. Here's your hosts, Juan Cicada and Tim Gasper. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Catalog and Cocktails. It's your weekly live hangout, a honest, no BS, non-salesy conversation about enterprise data management with tasty beverages in hand. I'm Tim Gasper, longtime data nerd and product guy at Data.World, joined by Juan. Hello, Tim. I'm Juan Cicada, the principal scientist at Data.World. And it's Wednesday, middle of the day, middle of the week, middle of the day, and time to take our break and chat about data and about modern data and about a stack around that modern data, whatever that's supposed to mean, because we're going to find out. <laughs> so we're joined by Brandon Chen from Fivetran, and Fivetran is one of those kind of key players that are in the middle of the modern data stack. And, and so we're going to have a great conversation. Hey, Brandon, how are you doing? Welcome, Brandon. Thank you, Juan. Thank you, Tim. I'm excited to be here and also excited to, uh, I don't know, drink and hang, hang out with you guys, talk about data stacks today and talk about some more modern data stacks. <laughs> Love the uh, picture of myself on the wine bottle. Hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks to the producers who did that. So, which is, takes us to the question of what are we drinking and what are we toasting for today? Who wants I am to drink- start? I can just go ahead. I can, go, Brandon, uh, go. Drinking this mango cart beer from Golden Road Brewing in LA, uh, based out of California, and very, very fruit forward. I would say a lot more close to mango juice than beer, but it's getting warmer <laughs> out there, so it's very refreshing. Nice drink. <laughs> nice. That sounds good. I, I would try that. How about you, so, Tim? I am drinking a Negroni. This is not wine, but if you kind of look at it from the right angle, it kind of looks like wine. So I guess uh, it's thematic. Well, I, I was I was tempted to just drink wine. And then, well, the whole thing was, is it fine wine or not so fine wine? But I said, hey, we got to keep the cocktail thing. So I'm actually having a white wine mojito and I'm actually using um, um, the Sauvignon Blanc that I had and and, and mint that uh, our our, our VP of sales, Tish, sent me some. So cheers, y'all. So what are we toasting for? What are we toasting? We got to toast for something. Hmm. Brandon, let me, well, Brandon, before this, you were talking about having meetings, right? Outdoor meetings that didn't happen. So let's toast for, we're finally starting to get in person and starting to have some meetings because, hey, we miss people. <laughs> so we're cheers. getting there, getting closer. Cheers. 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 So our, our funny warm-up question of the day, classic TV shows worth modernizing and rebooting. I got, well, again, the question is, what does classic mean? Just says, what does modern mean? But... <laughs> right because yeah i was thinking about this question i was like man i wish they would bring firefly back yeah i'm one of those guys um i love my sci-fi shows and firefly was awesome but then i was like that's not i don't know if that's old enough that's not classic right so then i wrote down buffy the vampire slayer i want i want i want to come back of that <laughs> how about you brandon you have one? Oh man i was a big fan of Fresh Prince is that old enough? <laughs> Fresh Prince of Bel Air. I think that counts. Yeah. Okay, that's a good one. Yeah, I was talking. I'm, if I'm going to go classic, I'm. I want to see Cheers, a, a reboot of Cheers, or we were talking before. Uh, imagine Taxi, but um, now it's updated. Now we call I don't know Uber or Lyft or something like that. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, so t- talking about classic and talking about modern. So let's kick this off. And and so I my honest no BS question to start off with Brandon is. What makes the modern data stack modern? And is it just because, oh, it's on the cloud and that must be modern? No, it has a fancy UI now and it's not like all clunky Windows 95 buttons. Like what makes it modern, honestly? Before I start, just uh, I was previously in sales. So if I ever get start to get too salesy, keep me on track here. Keep me honest. Tell me I'm being too salesy. We'll, we'll jump in. We will we'll non-salesy. <laughs> Much appreciated. Um, But modern data stack really depends on who you're talking to and what their experience is with any data stack to begin with, right? Because nowadays, there are many people that are like, yes, we are using a combination of, uh, let's say, like Tableau, um, whatever data warehouse, whatever data integration tool, whatever transformation, data governance, et cetera, et cetera. Um, And it is. like Tableau is fast. It works at a lot of companies that we would consider as the modern data stack. But Tableau has also been around since it was able to be uh, installed on a desktop version. There's still remnants of that when you see uh, when you start to like do the implementation. And a lot of the times when you think about modern data stack, you think about cloud and you think about these tools that have like kind of adapted to the cloud, kind of haven't. So I would say 
kind of, I don't know if there's a hot take here, but rather than think about cloud versus not cloud, think about how much easier it makes your life in terms of abstracting away a lot of things you need to worry about. So abstracting away, that's why we even think about cloud in the first place of, hey, forget about having to install this on a server, forget about having to implement this on a server um, and being able to, in this modern data stack paradigm, not only uh, work with all your other cloud objects, but also pretty much any of your um, on-premise objects and do so in a manner that saves you a bunch of time. I think that's what I think about when I think of modern data stack is really just saving time. Interesting. And so when you think about, you know, a lot of people, they start talking about modern data stack and they start getting excited about like, oh, that means it's built on React and it's new web tech, right? Or like it's mobile friendly or it has to be born in the last five years or something <laughs> like that, right? Like I, I've heard people use these phrases before. Um, you're saying like, yeah, maybe those things are correlated with modern data stack because they may lead to your life getting easier, may lead to not having to install it on servers, AKA SaaS and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But that's not the point. The point is more around, um, you know, just the next generation of tools that are gonna make your life easier. Yeah, exactly, yeah. And that ease of use, it's, it's not just like the easier from um, like managing it, but it's even just understanding where to go when you're inside there. Like, you and, and I'm saying easy as in once you're doing the onboarding, you can probably do it yourself. You can go in there, make your own account, sign up and instantly understand there's only a handful of buttons. I can figure out what all these buttons are doing. And it also means that it doesn't require um, something or someone being sent over from your uh, vendor that you're working with to send over like consultant. You have to pay extra professional services. Really, I think modern data stacks are, should be so easy that you're able to set up yourself and they should be not only easy, but also perform it. And again, not have you require not require you to tune every aspect of it. All right. So, so this is interesting. I like to get to get really honest about this and the the BS definition. Um, you don't install it, right? So I can that definitely it's on the cloud. So that's like a precondition to be modern is that it's on the cloud. It's self managed. You don't have to go install anything. Um, and I'm really liking this. Um, it's so it basically it's self service. Basically, you're taking taking out the need of having to have consultants. Now, if we go, if we're gonna go do the traditional old school approach, right? Well, I'm gonna go get the the traditional tools, right? And those always come with an extra price tag of services and people that need to come on board. Like the goal is is the goal to eliminate that? The goal is that you can you don't have to do that, or you're are you gonna acknowledge that we will need it? Or if you modern data stack only works with I mean, implies that you don't need consultants, but if your problem is too complex, then you then you're not ready for the modern data stack. How how, how would we slice this? Ultimately, this is just a potential another hot take. I don't think we'll need consultants anymore. However, I do think that um, given how easy tools are to use, and the fact that consultants need to feed their families, we're going to have consultants much much longer than we potentially um, should actually have need of them. And in some cases, we actually need them not just for like actually helping implement, but just for reassurance. So there's been so many times, like John, from my sales experience, people are asking me like, hey, should I do, should I set things up to like have like very, very basic example, like a raw schema versus a model data schema. Um, and it could be the answer is, well, if you have like a small enough use case, you could really just use the same schema for both. Um, but they're looking for that reassurance of like, hey, am I thinking about this the right way? And that's all in there to do in those cases. Like, yes, you're thinking about it the right way. You could do this, you could do that based on what you told me, yes. So maybe like the consultants in that case turn into much less of like a actual implementation sort of consulting and more just a, hey, Advice. just got check me in the beginning, yep. I like that honest, no BS take. Apologies uh, ahead of time to all the consultants in the audience, we love you. Um, but hey, self-service, cloud as a service, making things easier. Um, at some point, if you make things easier, it means that you can get to value quicker and you don't need as much help, right? So, I mean, you know, modern data stack, obviously there are some themes here about what it is. What about what isn't it, right? Like for example, you know, ETL that you got to install on premise. I'm not going to name names of companies here, right? That now all of a sudden can be available in the cloud. Is it now in the cloud? Does that mean it's modern data stack now? No, again, probably a little biased on my side, but um, <laughs> absolutely not. And uh, well, sorry. Well, well, okay, why not? <laughs> because um, it's not just like Gartner says, right? Like Gartner says, like these clouds, <laughs> even though they have a cloud component, it's great. Um, but sort of the adaptation of having to still like, look, look, and everyone has different variations of on the cloud, 
like some of them on the cloud means that some of these tools have partnered with other companies like AWS or GCP. So they'll spin up a server for you, but you still have to go in and then actually implement on that server. So it's like varying, it depends who we're talking about and it depends how integrated in the cloud they are because um, the, I guess the luck of it is that because Fivetran was created later, we had everything where, hey, yeah, it's really cheap for us to go and like buy a bunch of servers and then run this and automatically scale on our side. Um, but because they were created at a time where um, you couldn't just freely just buy servers and click them, uh, click them up and set them up in like minutes, they've had to adapt a lot of their technology and had to adapt a lot of their uh, current process or sorry, historical processes to be able to run on different people's cloud environments. Um, and although they have a little bit of support for like, hey, we can go ahead and set this up for you in, a, um, in some cloud environment that you own, uh, or we can even go ahead and implement it. It's just the behavior of what their tools were meant to do was just slightly different because it's slightly different uh, at the time. Hmm. Well, I mean, th th this is that this is the position that 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 the, the, the whole cloud position. Right? I think that's one of the big things that people talking to cloud. I'm cloud, but one thing is that you're truly self managed, mm -hmm. or you're like, oh no, this thing runs on some box. You still need to go manage, right? It's still in the cloud, right? It's AWS, I'm doing mm. air quotes, cloud, air, AWS, GCP, but somebody still needs to manage that. For, so it ends up being, if it's really native native cloud, which I like to use that term more, native cloud is that it's truly self-managed. You don't have to go worry about anything or any servers about that versus, right? I do have to worry about servers. So mm. you are starting, but you are starting to go see kind of a lot of these legacy, well, I mean, Again, goes back to how much is a classic modern going the back. But <laughs> if so, if a, a, a company or a tool that existed 10, 15, 10 years ago, right, they are now truly being self, self service, not self service, but uh, um, native, right? Mm -hmm. Are they now getting that stamp of being the modern data cloud, uh, the modern data stack? Uh, and I'm and I'm I'm pushing on this on on the words of modern data stack mm -hmm. because heck, words matter. And then otherwise we, we, we start using this stuff for like blah, 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 and just makes the stuff confusing. And I think, and everybody's just getting on this bandwagon. And I mean, this is, this is the annoying, annoying BSE and salesy thing. And I just, I really want to kind of just clear right. all this noise out. People latch onto this like modern data blank. Mm -hmm. Right. And, uh, you know, somebody creates a widget. They're like, well, we're the modern data widget. Right. And uh, and it's like, oh, God, you know, the marketers have taken over. Right. So I guess, you know, one of the questions is, is exactly what Juan's saying. Right. Yeah. And, and truthfully, I don't think as much as we can try, like, I don't think we'll ever get to like everyone's going to agree on this one definition and the definition is going to keep changing over time. But right. I can think of, okay, let's we'll kind of work backwards. We think about like, let's say Snowflake or BigQuery, commonly accepted as that's a modern data blank. Sometimes they call themselves cloud signs, whatever. Um, but if we think about this one thing, some shared traits across those two commonly accepted things. And like, for example, one shared trait is query optimization. Just back in query optimization, you don't need to touch anything. Um, and that's an example of how they're making it easier for you to use um, and abstracting away some of the tuning config that you might've had to do in the past. And that's in addition to them being cloud native and being modern in the sense of they're able to be in the cloud, connect to other cloud things. See, that, that's interesting, Brandon. I, I wonder if, you know, does the bar for modern move, right? You know, and, and as more players get in the space, as everybody's adding more features, more capabilities, you know, um, just because you were modern once doesn't mean you're still modern today. You gotta, you gotta keep up with the times. You gotta keep that, uh, you gotta keep your modern badge live, right? Keep, keep that experience going. Uh, th is that kind of the situation here? I am extremely positive. That's what's going on. It seems like we go through these cycles where it's like all these tools are like, Hey, um, let's take like some data integration tools. Some of the data and legacy data integration tools included like data governance, um, data some variation of like data cataloging. Um, but then now we're seeing a lot of these tools like split out because we're like, oh, to have a modern data stack, you need to have specialized tools in all these different areas that you might have. And then when we're splitting out tools like that, um, at some point, then the, the crowd starts to ask, hey, can we uh, maybe combine some of these tools for a little easier use? Um, like with Fivetran, they're asking a lot of times, like, hey, can you go find a census? Uh, and that fact is like, I think we just go through these cycles and I think things are always going to change. So to answer your original question, yes, I think the modern milestone is always going to be moving and moving and moving. So th this is this is what I'm seeing too, or and what I can imagine that's going to happen is that you take the whole, let's see, the whole workflow of data, right? That goes from mm -hmm. wherever it's being produced to wherever it needs to be go consumed. And, and 
traditionally, it would you just sort of make it very simple. You'd have your sources, you have ETL, it goes into a data warehouse and they're, they're inside the warehouse of the marts and everything. And you have your BI tools that consume to that. But now we're really wanting to break those things up. Like ETL is not just a thing anymore, right? You now have DBT, which does the T of ETL, right? Then you start doing, <laughs> then Snowflake can broke it up, then data breaks and you add all this stuff. And then there's so much different more BIs. And now you are going to add data quality and data quality is broken up to observability. And then you have things like great expectations. And then you have to have workflow and you break it up more and more and <laughs> more. One could argue that you have smaller pieces, which is great. I can go manage, but then you have to go do a bunch of little things. And then at the end, they don't, they're not free. We got to go pay for this. So like <laughs> these tools cost things and you add, add mm -hmm. and keep adding them, adding them at the end of the day, I think there's going to be a winner for each one. And then they're all going to start combining and welcome back to Informatica 2.0 in <laughs> five, 10 years. And we're going to go back to that, except that it's going to be the cloud and it's going to be, have a, have a cooler UI and less buttons or I'm not saying it's a bad thing, but I can predict that that's where we're going to go back to that. So all these I, I can I can first. hear in the background the soundtrack from Lion King. It's like the circle of life. <laughs> you know, that's that's what I hear in the background. And when I think about that, like I think, yeah. So my there's two ways I can think about it. One is yes, we'll all eventually merge back into one giant conglomerate. We'll all be coworkers at some point. But the <laughs> other thing I can see is because these tools by themselves are so so easy to use, um, that when you have a bunch of these tools, you don't get the amount of like tech debt that you traditionally associate with just onboarding a bunch of new tools because you don't have to manage them after that implementation. That is like the golden shining gray of hope that we could hold on to if we all hope that we are still working in our separate offices and not consolidating to one. So yeah, I think mean, that's it'll like- It'll be called Magic Data Button Incorporated, right? <laughs> <laughs> so, so let's dive into like, I've been naming some of these things, right? The, 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 the ETL and the T, which is DBT and stuff like, let's go into what are, what's actually inside of the, the, the data stack that is modern. What would you, what, what, I mean, let's name topics. And I think it's, I mean, we can name so, names. Yeah. So Fivetran does ETL. So that's obviously data integration is a key part, right? So yeah, what else? Are, yeah. Data integration. Well, let's, let, let's, let's go name these out. I mean, let's go from, from, again, let's go, let's start from the, uh, from the consumers, right? Data. People are consuming data from, there's a bunch of new BI and AI and BI analytics tools, right? Uh, we've had here, uh, Peter Bayless, right? From CSU data. And actually in the very soon we'll have next, in a couple of weeks, we'll have uh, uh, Ashley Kramer from, from SciSense, right? So there's a bunch of all these tools that are now modernizing the next, the next AI, uh, the next BI tools, right? So that's, there's a bunch of tools over there. And then they're consuming data from we call them what data warehouses, data lakes, uh, data lake houses. Uh, I mean, all that stuff, right? They, they, you know, which are the snowflakes and the data bricks, right? And and then what's what goes? I mean, what goes before that? Or yeah, I'd say like the way I typically think about it at work is probably influenced more by the people that we work with, the partners we have. So then the ways I'm always thinking about is data warehouse, data data destination, as I say in my mind, so I don't have to immediately say data warehouse slash lake slash cloud slash lake house. Um, so data warehouses and then those like the snowflakes, big queries, even up and comers like Firebolt, S3, whatever the case may be, Databricks. Uh, and then I think a lot about the transformation tool. And because we recently partnered with DBT, that's all everyone here talks about. But I mean, there's other tools out there like Matillion's built for uh, transformation, for example. Um, DBT is perhaps, I think, just trending right now because the, the hope is, hey, you just need SQL and you can do your transformations. Um, but of course, you could also always do your transformations in, in the BI tool itself. And like, I feel like a lot of people do it in Looker when they define it as semantic, uh, sorry, define that modeling layer. But there are other tools that are doing what I think are pretty cool, kind of unique things out there and taking slightly different approaches. So if you think about like um, Sigma, Sigma Computing, they do a, an approach that's like, oh, this is a worksheet style so that um, if you're familiar with Excel, ideally you should be able to merge the raw data sets yourself and create your own dashboards. And there's also other companies like ThoughtSpot out there that are doing things like uh, a similar like NLP kind of approach. So you still have to do things like define out modeling. Um, you still need to uh, set and integrate it with the warehouse, but the, their promise is that you'll be able to type in a question and get an answer without having to do something like uh, write any SQL, write any logic. Like you can literally type in what's my highest performing segment and then bam, you'll get your information. So That's I think there's a lot of cool tools out there. So it sounds like um, 
in addition to a lot of the key players that 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 Juan noted, that you're you're kind of noting that this modern data stack provides a little bit more of an open paradigm where if there are new kinds of tools that can come in and provide value, uh, f- for example, this sort of spreadsheet modality around uh, analytics that uh, that that can be part of the modern data stack and maybe be a little different than some of the other things that people have seen before. Totally, yeah, and I think this lines in with the the idea that modern is always going to be changing. Like the bar is always going to continuously uh, be raised for the tools to get easier to use and also more helpful. So, I mean, as time changes, like there there'll be more and more players swapping in and out. At some point, five chan won't be here anymore. Potential will be six chan at that point, but the tools will always be replaced. <laughs> I'm surprised you haven't said anything about like the the data quality, the data observability, the the data ops. Like, where did those fit in the data stack in the modern data stack? Those are huge, but a lot of people that uh, people that I've worked with in the past are still modernizing their entire data stack to begin with. So it's something that they don't need to think about quite yet. In the sense that a lot of the people that I've talked to are literally just trying to understand how can I make the use of my warehouse. Like a lot of the, even like the five giant customers, like one of the biggest uh, hurdles that we have. Sorry if I'm saying this, I shouldn't be saying this, but one of the biggest hurdles we have is like people integrate a bunch of stuff and they're like, wow, this is super super easy to bring in. And then after that, they're like, but what do I do with it? Like, <laughs> what are the metrics I'm pulling? My team told me to put this in, but now I don't really quite know what to do with this. Um, so I think before we get into all the data ops, data quality and stuff, that'll come as part of their natural like implementation. Just the first round of, hey, does this data make sense? Does it actually match what fit in the source? And a lot of them work backwards of, I, because they're starting off of just like modernized data stack, which means that they don't need to go into the source anymore because you know, data is already getting integrated warehouse, they can work off the warehouse. They'll start backward from the source and look and say, hey, I rely on this report there. How do I recreate it in the warehouse? So forget even about like any observability, any best practices in the warehouse, anything of, hey, how can I make this scalable? First thing is always, how do I even use it to begin with? And then that's when I think teams should start to think about first data quality, making sure that stuff that they actually report off is correct. I've been burnt by this in the past. Second that, uh, second to that is probably a little bit more data ops of like tracking who's touching what. Um, and this is something that I'm starting to learn more as I'm, Work as analysts. I, I have to say this does not sound like a, a recipe for success in my in my opinion because all you're doing is that you're just literally moving this. I'm 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 I'm. It's like I'm I got the closet right behind me and full of boxes and stuff that I haven't looked into. I'm gonna go move to a house. Well, how about if I I know I didn't have this closet over here. There's another closet in that new house. I'm just gonna go move all my stuff. Like, hey, if you're gonna modernize, you might as well actually kind of take control about the processes that you have. What are, what are you doing? I mean, I mean, but just kind of trying to replicate it as is, just because now it's the modern tool in the cloud. I mean, I think you're just, it's a huge missed opportunity. And then, then you're just going to get comfortable back in your old, on your old ways. And you're not going to really do anything. It's like part of me thinks that this stuff is, is by making it easier. We're just, which is like, one can argue it's a good thing, but then you're making it easier to, to pull shitty, they put shitty data into your data well, warehouse because now yeah. more people are have we've democratized the access we're not, <laughs> not democratized access we've democratized the loading of data and now i got i got to go deal with this a bunch of stuff i'm like no I, it's, I don't it's know. easier to make data sprawl now more than ever yeah but, mm-hmm. but you're talking about the hard work right like that like that's the knowledge work that's that's hard right yeah and i, I agree like i think it's easier to make data sprawl. it causes problems uh but that's the the idea that everyone's going, uh, a lot of companies are trying to go with, especially when it comes to like data lakes. They're like, who cares? You just throw everything in there. We'll figure it out later. And that's exactly why I tell a lot of people, you don't need to move your data to data lake yet. You don't need to deprecate your warehouse uh, because what you're trying to do is you're trying to run and you're trying to come up with, okay, where are we going to be like probably six years from now versus like, okay, let's deprecate everything now. And then part of it is going to come down to business constraints. If they even have to actually use what they're using right now or start with like a smaller set and try to figure out as they go. Right. So one of the other things that we that I'd like to touch on is when we start pushing data into your modern data destination, well, let's keep it that way. Uh, where does the modeling come into play? Because when you, when you, when you're now democratizing the the loadability of data to a bunch of people, like then people are just what copy and pasting stuff that, as you said, okay, I got this data here. What does it actually mean? What do I go do? Like how are in, in this modern data stack, in this modern world, how are we thinking about 
having clear models that people understand and having these transformations that are agreed upon. And, and, and because that's clearly what, that's what gives the meaning, the business meaning to the data. And I think every company kind of deals with it a little differently depending on how they're actually implementing the model way. Like sometimes, like I was going back to uh, whether they keep the transformation logic, the modeling logic inside the business intelligence tool or whether they do it in the warehouse and then pull from that curated set of data. So depending on how they do it, I mean, I have my personal preferences. Again, I, I've, even though I was talking about how I think DBT is trending right now, I think it's trending for a good reason. And part of that is like their, even their lineage docs, like ability to generate, um, not only use the same models again, but then have it auto generate this like kind of flow chart so that everyone can see, okay, from the source table here, like what's actually happened. So then what, what's the modern data modeling tool? I don't know if there will ever be a solid model. This, this, I mean, this, it I depends, yeah. This, okay, <laughs> somebody needs to go start a data modern, a data modern data modeling tool and it needs to go talk to, to all this data where I like, but this is this is this right there is an example of how we don't yeah. think about like we're just keeping mm -hmm. the old ways i mean modeling is so crucial and we're just doing all this modern technology stuff and the most crucial thing we've left it out of the modern data stack the, the, mm -hmm. oh oh man this 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 is not this is not good not good <laughs> i mean I don't know. we have these tools like sometimes it, it, it does suck if people haven't adopted them because we'll have these partners we'll use these tools and i'm like <laughs> so where do I figure out like where this table actually came from? Like I'm working off this schema called transforms.xyz tables, but then just look at them like, okay, but how are we managing these things? And is everyone actually on board on how we're managing these transforms or no? <laughs> well, part of this feels like it's a, uh, you know, a theme of this show has been around sort of uh, responsibility and ownership around key activities around the data, right? And if you think about the key people who are involved here, right? You've got data analysts, you've got data engineers, you've got data scientists, and then you've got, you know, your, um, your folks who are uh, sort of your IT managers and your architects, like ultimately, like who's really responsible for modeling, right? And, and who are the users of these tools? And, you know, it's, it's, it becomes kind of unclear whose responsibility that really is, right? I mean, when you're using data integration tools, or even when you're using DBT, you've got an end sort of goal in mind, which is much more narrow, right? It's usually like, I want to get data from here to there. I want to do it repeatedly. And maybe I want to do some transformations along the way, right? Yeah. yeah, I think it's, I don't know, like, it's definitely a problem uh, that all of our, a lot of our customers still continue to have. And even internally, like, depending on what we have, depending on what department it is, what uh, analytics said it is, we still have it as well. And then I think part of it is always like, hey, the business wants you to do something and this is your like team's listed out SLA. So sometimes we just have to start running before we can actually uh, make sure we're running with the, I don't know, flashers on. <laughs> right. How do we get to this dashboard or this question answered as fast as possible? You know, and if, and if you need to be a bull in the China shop to get it done do it right and, and then like I, I think of the earth and all like the the space junk it's like we're creating a, a data space junk in our companies you know yeah and then let's say like let's say your company wants to do your your data team small so you want to set up like a self-service data stack and then once it gets a self-service data stack i feel like all bets are a little off from there and the reason i'm saying that is personal experience of the like at our setup, we have like approved dashboards, but um, they also let us use a few certain tools, make our own explorers, things like that. And then uh, sometimes I'll take that and I send that my send that to my team. So regardless of whatever data modeling tool the actual data team is using, if there are self service users that aren't automatic, where their models aren't automatically integrated into that thing, then people are going to get confused about those as well. Right. No, that makes a lot of sense and. I mean, the, there's a, a good overarching point you're kind of leading to here, which is that like when you can make things more visible and sort of put things through a more well-governed path, you're going to actually get to a better place versus like the sprawl you can't see is the sprawl you can't manage, right? Mm -hmm. so, who, so this is kind of a, a, a hypothesis I have, and I'll see if you can clarify or tell me if I'm right or wrong here. Mm -hmm. I believe, or... 
younger companies are the ones who are going to get on who are on board with the modern data stack, right? And and they're they're younger companies, therefore they need to be efficient. They need to run really quick and stuff. So they don't have time to go think about, well, let's put up this process. Let's think about these models. Like who, here's the person in charge of this stuff. Here's the, here's the group of the team who's responsible for their data. It's like, we just got to move so quickly because we're young and we're, we don't know if we're going to be here tomorrow, right? So those are the folks who are going to be getting on, on board of the modern data stack. While kind of the older companies, they're like, it's going to take a while, right? They're already invested in their legacy world. Like wh why should they go modernize now? Yeah, maybe Gartner is telling them, right? That's how I'm seeing things. Does this does this resonate with what you've seen in the market, or or or, or correct me here? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Like, I'm trying to think about all the new tools that are coming up, and I do see it as a lot of the younger companies definitely pick up a lot of these younger or sorry, smaller tools, newer tools. Um, and then it's just kind of word of mouth. It seems like it's word of mouth from there. And then uh, I am also biased because I've lived and grown up on the West Coast, but I do feel like the West Coast companies are more inclined to be like, yes, let's just try this new random thing that no one else is using and let's try to fit it to make our <laughs> meet our needs. So a lot of the, especially like working in sales on the West Coast is kind of nice, especially when Fivetron was smaller because they were like, who are your customer references? Two years ago, not that many. So two years ago, it's like, you should try us though. That's an try interesting way to measure the maturity of some of these tools. <laughs> you look at their list of logos and you're like, startup, 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 startup. <laughs> oh, legacy company. Oh, these guys are legit. <laughs> yeah. And like the most recent example is probably like Divisium. Like that one's not even related to how small or how big that company is. But then basically how new they are, it seems like that informs what their uh, risk tolerance is for trying out some of these new, new tools. Right. That's, that's a very good point there. Um, and, and they and they're and they're open to do things kind of i mean they got it they got to test things and they have time and they're working all the time so we can go try try all these things once they're if once if they're growing right you start you they're not thinking about the the integration depth and this was a good conversation that we had uh with dave mccombs on on, on one of our past episodes about being data centric and the i think it was called power to the data is like mm -hmm. hey we talk about I mean, software debt, and we talk about, we've been talking about data debt too, but in reality, it's integration debt. Like I, I, I have all these pipelines to go to this stuff, but is that really the way, is that, that's, is that the ideal way to go maintain this? Or did I do that for this really quick request that I had? And, and now I'm being maintained and now it's being maintained and by connecting all these different modern tools together mm -hmm. and Hey, you guys are all startups too, right? Well, hopefully you're all around tomorrow too, because then what, <laughs> I mean, Anyways, I think there's, yeah, there's, you know, there's hopefully a lot the to bubble's not here. forming, right? And, uh, yeah. Especially Actually, with some yeah. of the smaller tools, right? L luckily, you know, you look at Five Tran and Snowflake and some others. Obviously, y'all are a lot bigger, so there's a less worry of the bubble there. But especially the smaller companies, you worry, right? I mean, I do think too that, uh, especially with the um, certain parts of the data stack, that there is a little bit of a uh, market cap for growth because. Uh, they don't get a lot of the the love and attention that the other parts of the data stack do, right? Like when I I gone to the Tableau conference, for example, and then I asked them like, "You ever have any problems with your data integration <laughs> into your warehouse?" And they're like, "Oh, we don't use a warehouse. We use Tableau." And then I'll talk to one of their friends, and they're like, "Oh, actually, yeah, Tableau's run off this Snowflake instance or something like that." So then a lot of times I feel like the BI tool immediately gets the most love from data analysts. So it's like a hey, like the market cap, uh, total more addressable market could be really really large for this. Same thing with uh, warehouses, like. If they run really fast, it kind of seems like they get um, that attribution of, hey, the data warehouse is responsible for storing everything. So let's go ahead and uh, spend more money on the data warehouse. Whereas there's certain tools where it's like um, data integration is a little hard to quantify ROI, even, even like data governance or data cataloging, a little hard-ish to quantify ROI um, and just not immediately as visible, I think, to people in the company. Right. Now, yeah, that's interesting. And, you know, your mention of analysts kind of makes me think about people. And, you know, before we jump over to um, lightning round questions here, you know, Brandon, how do you think about how people fit into the modern data stack, right? Do you see, you know, analysts, engineers, data scientists, do they have their sort of, you know, modern data stack tools of their preference and they gravitate towards those? Is the modern data stack kind of democratizing access to tools to more different types of personas, you know, and we've got the rise of new personas, right? Like the analyst engineer, what's, what's your take on, on people in the modern data stack? I think similar to the, the modern part of the modern data stack, it's always going to be a little bit open for interpretation. It just depends who you're talking to at the time. 
because we've had uh, analysts here that will do the work of data engineers, data scientists at other companies, including everything from building their own pipelines to building out uh, models on other people's, uh, the other integrations that we already have pumping in. Uh, so it just comes down to where they're working at, what company they're working at, and how small their team is. So how much other responsibilities, how many other hats they have to wear. Um, and the way that I see it, like a lot of companies will say like, hey, data scientists are all the way up here. Um, but, and this is another hot take. I think in some cases, some companies, the data scientists aren't doing what we're considering prototypical data scientists work, but it's another level created so that there is some sort of career progression at these companies. So that's my kind of like out there take on it. I think there's a lot of things that the, these engineers and analysts could be doing, but there, yeah. there's a there's a truth bomb hidden hidden in there, which is like, oh, you you know, you're you're a data scientist, aka an advanced analyst. You <laughs> you're a more expensive analyst, right? <laughs> uh, this is okay. We're we're being honest and no BS here, right? <laughs> well, we got the let, let's go into our honest no BS lightning round. Brandon, so we got a couple of questions for you. So I'll start off. Can legacy companies get onto the modern data stack? Yes. I think we're in 2021. There's no reason they can't. It's just a matter of shifting the one mark perspective into the technology. All right. You hear that, legacy companies? You're on notice. Get on the modern data stack. It's time. <laughs> um, all right. Question number two here. I use Snowflake. Do I have a modern data stack? Just what you asked that question. Oh uh, no, <laughs> no. The answer is no. You need these other tools to make a stack. You can't have just one thing be a stack of one a little bit. Of stack. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, hey, I'm, I'm gonna piggyback on this one, which is not my question, Tim, but it, I got Snowflake and Five Tran. Do I have a modern data stack? Of course you do. That's all you need. <laughs> hey, I was gonna I was, uh, uh, up to now. I was gonna say you got five stars on not being salesy, except up to now, Brandon. <laughs> That's all. That's like an open back. face sandwich. The bread and a piece of meat on it. Is that a stack? All right. We'll we'll let it slip. We'll let it slip. <laughs> all right. I don't have a modern data stack. Do I need to change that fact quickly? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> Sorry, that was salesy again. <laughs> oh, the right, the right. Organizing salesy questions on on, on purpose. <laughs> ah, didn't realize they were low hanging fruit. Yeah. <laughs> Oh uh, no, if everything's working fine, I don't think you need to change. You only need to modernize once things start taking too much time and you're not growing as much. All That's right. Probably <laughs> our problems everybody faces. <laughs> Therefore, then, yes, you need to go into the modern data stack. <laughs> right, right. You got it, right? All right. Last question here in lightning round. So when building the modern data stack, should you start with ETL, data integration, and data warehouse? Are those the two pieces that are the starting point? Start with the ETL and then data warehouse. Um, yes, though, I mean, truthfully, I wouldn't start with the ETL first. I typically start with the data warehouse and try to see what other ecosystems it fits in. So the data warehouse is kind of the the hub, right? And then the things, the things build around it. Yeah, in my opinion, yeah. That was an honest answer. Good job. <laughs> <laughs> I don't feel the back. <laughs> I want to change my answer to the PyTran Snowflake one. You actually don't need Snowflake. If you have PyTran, that's the stack. (laughs) (laughs) All right. Well, it's our TTT. Tim takes us away with takeaways. Go ahead, Tim. All right. So we got a lot of good conversation here. I, I like this. There's a, a, a lot to unpack around the modern data stack and, and what's what's real and what's marketing, right? So what makes it a modern data stack? I, I like that we kind of talked about, does it make your life easier? Can you not worry about needing to install it on a server? Can you get to value faster? It's got to be cloud. It's got to be self-service. These seem like uh, some good some good bars, but unfortunately, they're a little fuzzy, right? And it and it means that you know the you know this isn't it's subjective, right? And what's modern today might not be modern tomorrow. I, I like that Juan, you kind of threw out that litmus test of uh, maybe uh, if it doesn't. Well, actually, no. This is Brandon that said it, right? If it maybe it, it doesn't need consultants, right? And then Juan, you said maybe that's a litmus test a little bit, right? Is that if it, if it doesn't need a bunch of services, maybe that makes it modern. And and then finally, the other thing I liked was the the idea that the modern data stack 
even though we have some boxes like BI and ETL and data warehouse lake that things fit into, the modern data stack opens things up to not have to have things fit into boxes quite so neatly, right? Things can be hybrid tools. Things can be slightly new categories. You've got things like reverse ETL now, where it's like, like what the, what the heck is that? You know, <laughs> that couldn't exist in the legacy stack, but it makes sense in the modern stack. So um, that's interesting. That makes it very, very interesting. What about you, Juan? So uh, one is, I, I really like that you said is, hey, the definition of modern, whatever it is, the bar is going to change. It's, it's going to rise, right? So it's always going to be changing. So that's something to, that's important to note. And th this notion of consultants, I think this is a good, this is a good test, right? And for those consultants out there, hey, don't worry, don't be afraid. You're actually going to turn from implementation to more advisors. And I think that, I think that's also, I mean, you want to, you want, you want somebody to go talk to, to confirm what you're doing is the right thing. And actually a huge takeaway that I have right now is that there's no modern modeling tool. And I think, I personally think this is a huge fail and I'm afraid. I'm afraid about companies in 15, 20 years because whatever we're doing 30 years ago, we're gonna still do it 30 years from now. And that's not good. There's an unsolved need here and uh, probably a good topic for a future catalog and cocktails. Yeah, I think we have to go talk about modeling here. So let's go, Brandon, back to you. So our advice, our advice section. One, what's your advice about anything very broad, data, people, whatever? Uh, and second, who should we invite next? Uh, my advice is if you can do it in five minutes, just do it now. Save me X amount of time on washing dishes, <laughs> like hours of washing dishes time, probably. That's my number one benefit. Who would I meet? Uh, don't, even, don't know any models' names off the top of my head if we're going with that theme, but I am a big fan of Denise Person at Snowflake. She's their CMO. Uh, prior to Snowflake, she became VP of global marketing at Genesis at like age 27 or something crazy like that. And then she also launched Apogee and like defined like a, basically a whole new market segment. And me being the marketing nerd I am and trying to learn more, with, I think she would be great if you could uh, reach out there. Awesome. Love awesome. that. Yeah, we haven't had any people from Snowflake officially as part of the show, so we might need to remedy that. Love it. Hey, Brandon, thank you so much We're, uh, for this. This is a great conversation. Reminder, next week we are going to be talking about knowledge management means data management with Joe Hilger from Enterprise Knowledge. So li listen to us next week. And hey, rate subscribe, review us. We really appreciate all our, our listenership and, and, um, and let's keep this doing. Brandon, yeah. cheers. Thank you so much. We appreciate it. Cheers. cheers Thanks Brandon. for having appreciate me. It.